So I think it's good to start off with a definition of pre-qualifying in order to kind of frame the argument of how to avoid making mistakes. So pre-qualifying essentially is determining if your prospect is actually somebody who will likely to buy. Pretty simple definition, right? The sooner we know, in my opinion, if our prospect's a good fit for what we've got, the better my time is spent uh, in that particular sales presentation, okay? So one of the biggest reasons we do this is really just to efficiently expend our time with the highest odds opportunities while simultaneously, as quickly as possible, end our opportunities or end our presentations with the lowest odd opportunity prospects. And again, this is something that sometimes stands to reason or against the typical approach to selling insurance. If you follow the old fashioned way of pitching, what happens is there's very little pre-qualifying. There's a lot of assumptive language patterns. Like this is the best thing you've ever seen, isn't it? You want this one, right? Of course you do, right? And there's not a lot of engagement. There's not a lot of depth developed to figure out the desire and the need of the prospect or to even build it up. And what happens a lot of times with those old school approaches to selling is you end up pitching people who have really no need or interest or they're not even qualified on a couple other factors. And it's very emotionally a, a much of a roller coaster, it's very stressful, and you end up like just getting uh, just angry. And because you don't close a lot of people, you just push and push, and after a while that starts to wear on you after wear on you after a while. So what we implement, at least at my agency and DeFord Insurance Group, when it comes to final expense, this is something though that can work no matter what it is you're selling. Is that with um, pre-qualifying, our goal is to figure out within 10 minutes of our final expense presentation if this client is a qualified prospect or an unqualified suspect. And what we do in the final expense space is we figure out, okay, what are the major drivers that determine objectively if the client's qualified or not? And I say objectively, and what that means is not like I think or I feel like they're a prospect. I need to know factually based off of a, a series of questions if, these, if this prospect is somebody who's actually gonna buy. And so the five factors for us that make all the difference as need, does the client need this? They have to have a need, a why, in order for them to buy the vast majority of the time, which is unusual because there's all sorts of things you can buy and not need. But final expense is one of those things I really feel personally selling, training others that there needs to be an inherent need. And without it, it's hard to motivate somebody to spend money and never really experience it because they gotta die to get it, right? So they gotta have the need to drive the sale. They have to have the desire too. And those two are kind of like yin and yang. They're, uh, you know, they have to be kind of both there. You could need it, but not want it. And that person's not gonna buy either. So there has to be this desire, this feeling of personal responsibility, a sense of personal dignity. Certainly they want peace of mind to protect their kids from final expense, burden, cost, right? So they gotta have the need and the want. The other three factors, they have to have the health. That's typically the easiest part to, to satisfy, right? I mean, if they've got a pulse, and they're within 50 to 80 years old, 40 to 80, really, there's probably a plan for them with a guaranteed issue. They gotta have a bank account. We gotta have an account to take their money every month. We don't go buy the house and pick up a premium like in the old days. That reminds me of a prospect. One, one lady I saw, she did, we did take cash in 2011 and she pulled her money out of her bra. <laughs> Had to go get it turned into a money order. It was a little weird. Just go, whoo, flip it out. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Anyways, and then the last part is you got to have a budget, right? Like, what's the client's budget? What can they affordably pay for every single month? And so we'll kind of get into all of this. But when I have the answers to all those things, think about it for a moment. Do you think my prospect is better suited and more likely to buy? If they check yes to need, want, health, bank, and budget, then a client who doesn't, or maybe they say no to one thing, or maybe it's not addressed at all. Like, where would you place your odds if you had 100 presentations? The well-qualified approach or the kind of, just kind of running the, you know, the presentation without taking consideration. So most of you all out there are logical, I think, and would rather have a preconceived process to figure out if that prospect's a good fit or not. And so our strategy does an amazing job of that. And the cool thing about it is it preserves your self-dignity 
You guys, you don't have to beg anymore for insurance. You know ahead of time if these people are a good fit for you or not. You're the one basically laying the groundwork who's going to be a good fit for you. And you can end the presentation if they're not a good fit. It keeps you in control. You don't have to grovel. I hate that in sales, you know. Hey, if you're enjoying this training, maybe you should consider joining DeFord Insurance Group. The reality is that most insurance agencies are knee deep in the MLM Kool-Aid drinking schemes and you don't need to be a part of that if you value the mentorship and training necessary to learn how to sell successfully. Go to davidduford.com to learn more.